Hey folks, how are you? Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another hopefully exciting episode of In The Loop TV, sponsored by Harvey Performance Company. Before we get started, formality, everybody knows how this works, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with anybody you think might gain from the knowledge we bring as a cutting tool company. Love to get that out of the way, love to talk to all the great people out there that put great comments in, and hopefully enjoy these episodes. Coming to you on this episode, what are we going to talk about? Let's get right to it. We are going to talk about reliefs on an end mill. So you might be saying to yourself, relief on an end mill, wow, that sounds really exciting. We're going to talk about basically three different kind of reliefs that are on an end mill, but how do they work? How do they cause the effects when you're actually making a chip? And how does that end mill either perform, last longer, work in different materials based on the relief that's on the OD? Let's jump to it. Can't do it here. We is gonna run to the shop. Talk about it next. So folks, thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining me on another episode. Listen, we are going to have some fun. We're going to learn about reliefs on an end mill, but let's do it a little bit different. Let's not do this boring stuff. If you watch these episodes, let's kind of get to it, explain it a little bit more so it makes sense and you can use it in your environment or at least understand why we as manufacturers put certain relief on certain cutting tools for certain materials. It's going to be fun. So let's talk about the first thing, which is most important. What is the relief on an end mill for? Why do we have relief on the OD of an end mill? Well, the relief is there so it doesn't rub on the OD, right? We got to grind away on the relief because an end mill cuts on the side, which is kind of funny because it's called an end mill. You would think it cut on the end, but the end is the side. It cuts on this, the side. So we need relief. So when it's cutting and forming a chip, those chips, and that material doesn't rub with the tool. So that's what relief is. So folks, we're talking reliefs on an end mill. Reliefs on an end mill, how can that be exciting? Well, it's exciting to me. I'm a cutting tool geek, right? Hopefully, or the cutting tool counselor. Hopefully, you understand a little bit more. We're gonna talk about reliefs on an end mill, and there's really three different types of reliefs we put on the OD of an end mill. Understand, end mills cut on the OD. They don't cut on the bottom. They can cut on the bottom, but an end mill actually cuts on the side. So that relief that's on the OD of the side of that end mill really means a lot. And the way we actually engineer and design that and put that on there can help you use it in your shop a little bit better. Let's explain. So really there's three different kinds of reliefs that you can put on an end mill. I'm gonna throw in four, but there's really three. Let's just run through them quickly and then I'm gonna explain each of them individually. The first one is a flat grind. Standard flat grind. I'm not going to tell you what that is. We're going to dive into it. Second one is eccentric. Eccentric relief. And I'm not talking like eccentric, like nice clothes and a nice car. I'm talking eccentric relief on an end mill. Eccentric has its benefits. The third is something I like to call con-eccentric. Remember I said there was actually four? One is called con-eccentric, which actually means there's concentric and eccentric mashed up in it. You're going to want to stick around and find out what that is. And the fourth one, I did three, but the fourth one is actually a con flat. So we have con flat, con eccentric, eccentric, and flat grind relief that we can put on end mills. Each one comes with its benefits. Each one comes with its purposes. Spoiler alert, it's a round material. And each one you can use in your shop if you understand it, or at least pick out the right end mill. So let's just talk about the first one, flat grind. Flat grind. It's probably the most common old school uh, grind that you're going to see, especially on high speed steel. Now, remember, we're a carbide high performance company. So a lot of the stuff I try to give knowledge on is more toward the carbide thing. But a flat grind is kind of old school where all you're really doing is off the cutting edge. Everything cuts on the cutting edge. OK, right off the cutting edge, what we're going to do is take a wheel and grind a flat right off the cutting edge to create relief. And then that we'll call primary, primary relief. And then if that's not enough because of our land, we'll put a secondary. So a flat grind is just a standard angle that you're hitting with a wheel to relieve it so it doesn't rub on the OD. What's some of the cons of a flat grind? 
Well, some of the cons of a flat grind, when you do that and you put a flat grind on a tool, it doesn't give a lot of meat behind the cutting edge. The cutting edge is doing all the work, right? So when we relieve behind it, we have to be conscious of how we're going to relieve behind that cutting edge in order to create the strongest edge we can. So when you run a flat grind, it's basically a cup wheel. It runs right down at an angle. It's measured in angles. So it'll be like maybe seven, eight degrees on a primary and then 15 degrees on a secondary. So it's the easiest way. A lot of regrind companies will regrind with a flat grind. And we actually did it old school back in the day. It was the only way we could actually do it. That's a flat grind relief. So now let's talk about something called eccentric relief eccentric relief. Now eccentric relief is kind of where this day and age is coming in carbide end mills. Eccentric relief, if you look at an end mill, you're going to see it almost looks like it's not ground on the OD. I've even had customers come up and say, hey, this tool is not ground. Look at this. You haven't cut it. It is ground. It's eccentric. So instead of doing a flat grind and just knocking off from the primary, right? And taking that meat away, what we're doing is we're rolling. Now we're rolling that edge to give it eccentric. So it doesn't drop as far as it does if it's flat grind. So what does it do if you put eccentric relief? It makes the cutting edge stronger. So now we have more meat behind the cutting edge. So when you're getting into more difficult materials to cut, eccentric relief is what you want on your end mill, which means we're rolling away from the cutting edge to a nice eccentric and gradually dropping that versus a flat grind, it makes the cutting edge a lot stronger. Now that doesn't get measured in an angle. You can't measure it in an angle. So we actually measure that with an indicator. We measure it with the drop. So now that's measured in thousands versus angle. That's eccentric relief and it's built for stronger tools. If we just step back to flat grind a little bit, usually a tool that's cut in aluminum or softer materials can get away with a flat grind. When you're cutting stronger materials or heat treated materials, that eccentric relief is what you want on that end mill. So now let's talk about the third one, which I called con eccentric, or like I said, it was three or four con flat, which basically means what we do is we run a cylindrical margin. So we don't relieve anything right on the end of the tool. Very small, it's micro, but we don't relieve anything. And then we run eccentric behind that margin. So right off the cutting edge, there is a cylindrical margin and then we create all that relief. Now, when I said it's con eccentric or con flat, the relief behind that cylindrical margin can be a flat grind too as well. So it can have that primary and secondary on it. It also can have that eccentric. Now, where do you use something that has a con eccentric or a concentric or a cylindrical margin on the OD and then a back off? Usually your softer materials, your aluminums, because you don't want to grab the material, right? And if you make that up sharp and you go all the way to the end of the tool on the relief on some aluminum materials and don't put a little cylindrical margin or what we call conocentric relief, then it grabs the material and you start pulling it and you have a problem. So if you put a nice conocentric relief on there, that OD, that cylindrical holds on to the material a little bit better. It doesn't bite, doesn't chatter as much and gives you a better relief. We can call that con eccentric and we can call it con flat because remember we're relieving it behind. If we wrap this up and just talk about the three of those really quick. The first one is flat grind, flat grind relief. Remember, we're trying to relieve the OD of the end mill so it doesn't rub, but we also want to pro provide strength on the cutting edge. So when we do a flat grind, you're usually not providing as much strength as if we go to the second one with his eccentric, but that's simple. It's just a regular flat grind on a primary and a secondary relief. You can notice it because it's very notable when you look at that end mill. The second one, eccentric relief. Eccentric is going to be your strongest relief that you can provide because it's going to give you drop behind the cutting edge, but it's also going to give you strength on that cutting edge because when that cutting edge is forming the chip, and you don't, and you got a big drop behind it, it makes the cutting edge a lot weaker. So when we roll that and create eccentric relief on there, you have a stronger cutting edge, you have a stronger tool, and you can go into your more super alloy materials. The third one, 
Conocentric or con flat is where we do a cylindrical margin, which means it has no relief. That cylindrical margin, it's very small. Let's say two, three, five thou at tops. So you're not a huge margin on there. There's a very small cylindrical margin on the end of the tool, and then you relieve it behind it. So these are more for your aluminums, softer materials, and it doesn't bite and it doesn't, it doesn't grab into the material that much. So those are the three, three types of eccentrics, conocentric, and flat grind reliefs that you're gonna find on an end mill and a little bit of story of how they work in your appli application. Hopefully you understand that. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. We love to hear those questions and I love to answer those questions specifically. The next in the loop short is gonna be on welding flats. Welding flats, wow, how important is a welding flat? Side lock holder, that's gonna be interesting, I'm telling you. Come back for the welding flat one because we got some interesting tips on welding flats, on how to use them, how we manufacture and how they were made and a little bit of history on welding flats to help you understand whether or not you want a welding flat in your application. Besides that, I hope you had fun. Thanks for joining me. Come back on the next episode, but before I go, three guarantees in life, death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.